It's the first weekly weird news of 2024. Yay. And what better way to climb back into the saddle than with some news that checks multiple boxes. The kind of news that's our bread and butter around here. And those boxes are uh, news about Florida man, news about toilets, and news about being randomly attacked out of nowhere by various bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. Three boxes. So yes, this first story is gross. And you can skip it if you want. But if you're a bad enough dude to be a real <laughs> ride or die, yeah. we present the story of Florida man and the exploding Dunkin' Donuts toilet. Put the food down. Here's the Associated Press. A customer has filed a negligence lawsuit against Duncan, claiming he was injured by an exploding toilet at one of the coffee chain's locations in central Florida. Paul Kerouac is seeking more than $100,000 in a lawsuit filed Wednesday in state court in Orlando, claiming he suffered severe and long-term injuries following the explosion of a toilet in the men's room of a Duncan location in Winter Park, Florida a year ago. After the explosion left Kerouac covered in human feces, urine, and debris, he, wa he walked out of the men's room seeking help from workers help. And, the, <laughs> and the store's manager. I need help, please. <laughs> According to the lawsuit, uh, an employee told him that they were aware of the problem with the toilet. It does that sometimes. Oh, that that's the toilet that kills people. Yeah, you gotta be... got to take it easy you've, around that toilet. You've had the Panera lemonade that kills people. You've had the jack-off joggers. Do you dare step foot into the Duncan with the exploding toilet that kills people? This guy did. Uh, yeah, so the, the employee said that they were aware of the problem with the toilet since there had been previous incidents. We keep putting that thing back together and nevertheless, it keeps exploding. Uh, and that lawsuit explained that without diving into further details about the explosion. Yeah, which, well, I need further details. Yeah. I really, I wish there were further details here because they are very vague about what they even mean by exploding toilet. Like, did the toilet simply erupt? Yeah, Was I, it an eruption? Or did the porcelain itself shatter along with the eruption? Did it go out in every direction or just up? When you flush it, does it spark and ignite the fumes that are trapped in there? Was he uh, sitting on the toilet when it happens? Did he get blown into the ceiling? Did this happen after he flushed, or did it just com happen completely at random? We want to be able to picture in our heads how this incident went down, but there just aren't enough details. So, until further clarification, we are just simply going to picture a toilet that is both erupting and exploding with uh, this Paul fellow in a seated position with his pants down, but suspended in midair due to the sheer force of the eruption. Just a geyser. Explosion. A geyser below him. Because uh, that's... It's the funniest possible interpretation, but also it's de that would make it definitely worth the one hundred thousand dollars that he's asking for. Give that man the prize. But yeah, there, there's also some confusion on that. Some other outlets are saying that he's only seeking fifty thousand. Come on, Paul, go yeah. for the full one hundred k. Those other outlets also clarify that the date of the incident when it happened was January sixth of last oh. year. Oh, so that's another one of our boxes checked. Yeah, January sixth was the worst day of my life. What do you mean? Were you at the Capitol? No. no. January 6, 2022, I went into a Dunkin' Donuts bathroom in Florida. And I exited that bathroom covered in urine, feces, and debris. This also harkens back to uh, a previous story and a cautionary tale. Because, you know, we had that story uh, maybe a couple years back where the guy said he was going to go blow up the toilet. And everyone yeah. thought he was serious. And now... That's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I bet, like, I mean, we haven't seen Duncan's counter to this lawsuit yet, but I, I assume that their argument is going to be, oh, yeah, he blew up the toilet, but that was on him because he was full of donuts. That's what people, when they eat a bunch of Dunkin' Donuts, yeah, they blow up the toilet, but that's, it's coming out of their ass. It's not coming out of the toilet towards their ass. Yeah. Your Honor. Checkmate. So, yeah, there you go. Poop news. We're back, baby. Yeah. But with the poop news portion of the episode out of the way, uh, hello to everyone who skipped ahead. And now let's feast upon even more of our bread and butter mm. with some updates on one of our favorite characters. The mayor of New York City, who, I mean, keeps proving that he might be the dumbest mayor anyone's ever seen. Which one, though? Because there's two, oh, yeah, two well, of our favorite characters yeah. are, qualify as the mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani and... Current mayor, Eric Adams. Yeah, they're both on the docket today, but let's start with Rudy first. Uh, Rudy. <laughs> during our holiday break, Rudy Giuliani's decades-long fall from grace somehow got even worse. 
And that is really saying something. Considering in 2023 alone, he found himself accused of both trying to overturn the 2020 election and of being the creepiest, horniest old man who ever lived. I've come to claim my tits. Those are Rudy's. Uh, throughout these various legal scandals, we definitely started to wonder if Rudy's finances might be in trouble. And it turns out, yes, Rudy's finances definitely are in trouble. And that's in large part thanks to a third legal scandal that he had to deal with last year. Mr. President, a third scandal has rocked the finances of Rudy Giuliani. Here's the AP from December 21st. Rudy Giuliani filed for bankruptcy on Thursday, acknowledging severe financial strain exacerbated by his pursuit of former President Donald Trump's lies about the 2020 election and a jury's verdict last week requiring him to pay $148 million to two former Georgia election workers he defamed. The former New York City mayor listed nearly $153 million in existing or potential debts, <laughs> including almost $1 million in state and federal tax liabilities, money he owes lawyers, and many millions of dollars in potential judgments in lawsuits against him. He estimated he had assets worth $1 million to $10 million. Giuliani had been teetering on the brink of financial ruin for several years, but the eye-popping damages award to former election workers Ruby Freeman and Wandrea Shea Moss pushed him over the edge. The women said Giuliani's targeting of them after Republican Trump narrowly lost Georgia to Democrat Joe Biden led to death threats that made them fear for their lives. Yeah, so that defamation lawsuit somehow didn't really land on our radar while it was happening, but it's pretty similar to the legal trouble Alex Jones has found himself in in recent years i.e. baselessly accusing people of something horrible, resulting in years of harassment and death threats. Here's the New York Times' reporting last month. Over hours of emotional testimony during the civil trial in Washington, Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss described how their lives had been completely upended after December 3, 2020, when Mr. Giuliani first suggested that they had engaged in election fraud to tilt the result against Mr. Trump in Georgia, a critical swing state. The women, who are black and mother and daughter, were soon flooded with expletive-laden phone calls and messages, threats, and racist attacks, they testified. People said they should be hanged for treason or lynched. Others told them they fantasized about hearing the sounds of their necks snapping. They showed up at Ms. Freeman's home. They tried to execute a citizen's arrest of Ms. Moss at her grandmother's house. They called Ms. Moss's 14-year-old son's cell phone so much that it interfered with his virtual classes, and he finished his first year of high school with failing grades. This all started with one tweet, Ms. Freeman told the jury, referring to a social media post from Mr. Giuliani saying, Watch, video footage from Georgia shows suitcases filled with ballots pulled from under a table after supervisors told poll workers to leave room and four people stayed behind to keep counting votes. It's a little bit of definite defamation. Yeah. Uh, my work here is done. Uh, specifically targeted at the craziest people yeah. in the country. What? I'm just pointing it out. How was I to know that uh, I've cultivated over the years uh, a supporter base of the most dangerously crazy people in the country? Yeah. How would I know that? And yeah, another similarity to Alex Jones is that Rudy Giuliani mostly refused to cooperate with the lawsuit, including by not turning over his financial information so that the court could see how much money he really has and then, you know, define the penalties accordingly. Uh, so yeah, this is an elite move. Because the court then simply assumed that he was rich and charged him a rich man's fee. Well, he did own trouble. New York City at one point. He, the Big Apple. Yeah. Biggest one around. Another elite legal move was admitting in a court filing that his statements were, quote, defamatory per se and false while insisting that he was simply exercising his free speech. This man ran New York City. Mm -hmm. He served as a U.S. attorney and he acted as legal representation for the former president of the United States of America, folks. And now he's broke. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's beautiful. And as the AP points out, declaring bankruptcy likely won't erase the $148 million verdict. Bankruptcy law doesn't allow for the dissolution of debts that come from a willful and malicious injury inflicted on someone else. A judge said Wednesday that Freeman and Moss could start pursuing payment immediately, saying any delay could give Giuliani time to hide assets. So, and he definitely uh, would do that. Hey, I got it. I'm a lawyer. I'm going to declare bankruptcy. I yeah. declare bankruptcy. They're never going to get it. Wait, yeah. what's that? A oh, bankruptcy doesn't affect uh, their ability to seek damages? Mm -hmm. Well. Hmm. Meanwhile, Rudy Giuliani owes so many people money that uh, they're likely going to be joining forces in what's called an unsecured creditors committee to make sure that everyone gets paid. 
And here's the New York Daily News on that. Among those who had applied to serve on the committee by Tuesday, according to their lawyers, were Dunphy, the woman who accused him of sexual harassment, ex-ShopRite worker Daniel Gill, who's suing him for $2 million for falsely accusing him of assault, along with Davidoff Hutcher and Citron, the law firm of his longtime attorney and confidant, Bob Costello, which is suing him for almost $1.4 million in unpaid legal fees. Attorneys for Moss and Freeman, President Biden's son Hunter, voting machine companies Smartmatic and U.S. Dominion, an election security worker, and various other entities suing Giuliani would not confirm to the news whether they had applied. Lawyer Arthur Idella owed $387,860 by Giuliani in outstanding legal fees, declined to say whether his firm would apply to join. Those who are selected to serve on the committee of Giuliani's worst nightmares may soon have the power to ensure he's doing all he can to cough up his dues, like investigating his business dealings, requiring he consult with them before making major decisions, and participating in a plan to reorganize his assets or potentially craft one of their own. This man is fucked. He owes so much money to so many people. Like the, the This is essentially a class action. The the grocery store worker one was another one I forgot about. Like he accused a guy working at the grocery store of assaulting him. Yeah. On the internet. Again, just like broadcasted that and it's like not fucking true. So he owes that guy millions. He owes his own lawyers a bunch of fucking money. Those that woman he sexually harassed a bunch of money. A Hunter Biden he owes a bunch of money to. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. Uh, hey, where's his son that kind of looks like him? His the son, one that was in the Trump administration. His son doesn't look like him. His son looks like a weird ginger. Yeah, Not he that has, gingers he are weird, but he looks like a weird he ginger. He has the mouth. Yeah. The Giuliani mouth. It's unmistakable. Yeah, he seemed like he was making a go at like a political career there for a while, but I don't know what happened to him. Uh, yeah. Probably working on that live golf tour. Although, no, didn't they merge with PGA? Who knows know. anymore? Anyways, Rudy Giuliani is 79 years old, and it would appear that he will be spending the remaining years of his life getting shaken down for every penny he's got. Yeah. And that's the best case scenario because, uh uh-oh, there's also a solid chance that this dude just ends up dying in a Georgia prison cell, depending on how that trial shakes out. And it's not looking good. Mm -mm. As we last we checked, people were flipping like... Pancakes? Flipping like pancakes. Hey, cool. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how this goes because I feel like he is now in such a tight position that, Rudy, if you're smart, you're not. But if you're smart, you will flip. Yeah. You will... You will flip like a pancake. He already had his chance to shut the fuck up. Now he has to flip. Yeah. Uh, For a man who spent decades of his life working in the legal profession, it is fascinating uh, how little he understands about it. Well, And how it's become his downfall. I mean, it could be a clear example of cognitive decline. Yeah, maybe. Anyone who's, like, still in prison... uh, He's also... He's not that... I mean, 79's old, but it's not, like... Brain mush old yet. Every every mobster that this man sent to prison in the 70s should sue uh, to like for the, their release and say that, like, look at this. This is the man that convicted me. Obviously, this was a sham yeah, trial. Yeah, this was a sham trial. I should yeah. get out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, things have come a long way since Rudy Giuliani was America's mayor. But moving on now to New York City's current mayor, Eric Adams. A very different guy in many ways, but like Rudy, he's extremely weird. And also, allegedly, extremely corrupt. Yeah, stuff was getting raided uh, in relation to him recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today, we're mostly going to explore the weird side of things Mm -hmm. via not one, but two video appearances from the mayor. Now, first off, last month, a local NYC TV station had the mayor on for a lighthearted interview about the year wrapping it all up, and uh, which, in true New Yorker fashion, Eric Adams used as an opportunity to promote New York City as the greatest city in the world. Okay, seems normal. What, yeah. What's weird about this? Mr. Mayor, we've come to the end of what was a very eventful 2023, right? <laughs> so when you look at the totality of the year, if you had to describe it, and it's tough to do, in one word, what would that word be and tell me why? Uh, New York. Uh, this is a place where every day you wake up, uh, you could experience everything from a plane crashing into our trade center to a a person who's celebrating a new business that's open. Uh, This is a very, very complicated city, and that's why it's the greatest city on the globe. So, yeah, that's a wild 30 seconds right there. First off, sir, you were asked to describe the year 2023 in one word, and your reply was New York. (laughs) I mean, that is what a New Yorker would say. New York. (laughs) That's how I describe every year. Center of the universe, baby. Uh, You then explained that answer with the typical... Anything can happen in New York City, template. But the only two things that you listed 
were people starting small businesses okay. and the worst terror attack ever inflicted on the United States of America. Anything could happen. You could have a 9-11 or open a bodega. So yeah, these are the two things that make New York City the greatest city on earth, I guess. So yeah, I mean, that's an incredible answer, but that's not the only Eric Adams clip we have for you today. This next one actually comes from way back in 2011 when Eric Adams was a New York state senator, but it pops up again from time to time, including this week when we first saw clips from it, and it's a doozy. So here you go. I'm New York State Senator Eric Adams, and for 22 years, I wore a bulletproof vest. Please come and join me inside my house. What I would like to show here is to empower parents on how to search a room inside their home. You write the Constitution. There are no First Amendment rights inside your household, but you always have to inspect what you expect. You can look in a jewelry box, a jewelry box of this nature, maybe a simple jewelry box, but if you look through it closely, you don't know what your child may be hiding. For instance, a gun could be hidden, a small caliber weapon could be hidden inside a jewelry box. So when your child brings in his popular knapsack with many different locations, look through it to see what exactly is your child carrying in addition to a book. Something simple as a crack pipe, a used crack pipe. Behind a picture frame, you can find bullets. What does that mean to find bullets? Does it mean your child is, is carrying a gun? No. Where there's smoke, there's possible fire. Where there's a bullet, there's possibly a gun. The baby doll could be just a baby doll, but also it could be a place where you can secrete or hide drugs. Run your hands over the pillows. This one could be hidden inside a pillow, a gun. Just look and see what's inside your bookcases. Perfect place to hide. Uh, cocaine, there are no First Amendment rights in your home. You have a duty and obligation to protect the members of your household. <laughs> and look at that. As something as simple as a crack. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to check these baby doll diapers. Yeah. They could be hiding an ounce they of could marijuana. Be secreting marijuana. Uh-huh. His his word choices are so interesting. Yeah. I, and look. Right here, behind this vase, it's that weird cobbled-together gun that killed Shinzo Abe. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, think of all, all this. If you're not raiding your kid's room on a nightly basis, it's there's probably so many guns and drugs. I in opened there. up my son's door. There it was. The contraption. <laughs> the one everyone talks about. No! So, yeah, yeah that's incredible. So mm -hmm. many things happening. The melodramatic music. The room absolutely filled with weapons and drugs. The way he refers to a backpack as a popular knapsack with many different locations. That's how normal humans talk. And uh, like we said, this video makes the rounds every couple of years. Back in 2021, Vice actually found and interviewed the staffer who was tasked with making the video, who provided a, a little bit of behind the scenes info about the shoot. So we go in to shoot the thing and he tells me that he's gonna look around and point to things and he's gonna talk to the camera. And he said, I'm going to put this revolver in a pillow. He was talking to himself and also kind of talking to me like, that's where that would go, right? And I'm thinking, no, I probably wouldn't put a revolver in my pillow. But I'm not going to tell him that. Usually you put that between your mattress and your box spring if you've ever watched any movie ever. But I was like, okay. He had another pistol in a jewelry box that he pulled on me. And you can see my reaction with the camera. He didn't warn me that there was a second gun in there. <laughs> he was like, I'm just going to wander around the room and find things. The whole thing was insane. I knew it was going to be bad when we got there. At that point, I'd already done a few videos with him, but I was a little bit shocked with this one. There are no First Amendment rights in your home. I didn't know he was going to say any of that stuff. I didn't know there were going to be guns. I didn't know how much drugs he thought was a normal amount of drugs to put in a doll. Yeah, yeah this, uh, this teenager is moving weight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Simple, something as simple as a, ki a kilo of uncut yeah. fentanyl. Yeah. Your, your son is... <laughs> El Chapo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he also says that there was no script, which is obvious, but also that the guns and bullets in the video were real, which Man. is especially insane, considering this is a video promoting public safety. And he pulled it on the guy <laughs> making the video. Yeah, just sort of waving it around. Uh, he also said of the music choice, well, there are only so many available options. It wasn't going to be acoustic. It wasn't going to be hip hop. It wasn't going to be electronic. I had a limited palette to work from, but I had to put something over it because he took these long pauses to look around the place, trying to remember where he hid whatever thing. There's probably still things in that room to this day. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, it, it was Eric Adams' own apartment. 
Oh, yeah. He was just like, yeah, come by. He was probably pulling things out in the video that he actually hid yeah. without the intention <laughs> of finding it on video. Oh, well, Something uh, as simple as a crack pipe. <laughs> that, yeah, that's there. That's yeah. your kid's crack pipe, uh-huh. not Eric's. This is, uh, it's almost like on the level of that, uh, what's that old video, the combobulator or whatever, where the guy's just naming fake parts of a machine. <laughs> the classic, uh, yeah, yeah, engineering humor yeah. video. It's not real. No. But it, they, they do a great job. Well, this is uh, not real. Quantum pentabulator? This, this, is, this is not how people hide drugs and stuff around their room. Yeah, it is, in New York. It's a New York thing. We don't do it like this on the West Coast, no, but over yeah. in New York, like... They if, do things different. If you see a doll or a pillow in someone's house, there are... That is a loaded weapon. There are illegal paraphernalia inside of it. Uh-huh. But let's let's move on now to another politician doing caught doing something weird. Myra Flores is a former Congress member from Texas who served for less than a year after winning a special election in 2022 and then losing the next general election in 2023. But she's currently planning on winning back that seat, and she's seen by many in the GOP as an important figure in the growing demographic of conservative Latinos. Well, okay, that political future may now be in jeopardy. Here's the Texas Tribune. In a bizarre micro-scandal that some have dubbed Grubgate, a former GOP congresswoman who is running for her old seat in South Texas is being accused of routinely stealing photos of Mexican food from other social media accounts and passing them off as her own cooking. Earlier this week, Myra Flores... <laughs> this is so Seymour Skinner coded. <laughs> what, <Yeah. if> <laughs> what if I stole some pictures online and passed them off as my own cooking? Yes. Mm, diabolical. <laughs> Earlier this week, Myra Flores, the first Mexican-born woman to serve in Congress, posted a photo on social media that she described as gorditas de masa, with the caption, the ranch life with family is the best. Soon after, a user on X, formerly known as Twitter, pointed out that the image was previously posted on a Facebook page, Visit Guiana, in March 2022. Others said that the food in the photo was not gorditas de masa. That prompted the conservative website Current Revolt to dig further into Flores' social media accounts, where they found numerous other posts in which Flores used others' photos of campfire cooking or homemade tortillas to illustrate her own idyllic life on a ranch. As a proud Latina who knows how to cook, homemade Mexican food tastes better from a gas stove, (laughs) she wrote, alongside one photo of eggs and tortillas on what appears to be a wood-burning stove. (laughs) The photo was initially posted on Facebook in 2021 by a Spanish-language magazine. (laughs) As Why people, lie about this? What if I were to pass it off as my own <laughs> cooking? I love it. As people looked into this more, it turned out that there were tons of examples. Basically, any time that this lady posted a picture of food captioned in a way that heavily implied that she'd taken the photo and or cooked the food, it was just something that she'd found on the internet. And social media food pics are something that people do take very seriously. Yeah. That's This is a crime. They're calling her the George Santos of the Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> Though that's maybe a bit of a stretch. Well, I mean, if she lied about this, what else did she lie about? True. Uh, anyways, on Twitter, she's apparently been blocking anyone who posts about the food pictures. And when reached by the Texas Tribune for comment, she insisted she did not intend to mislead anyone. And that they should be instead focusing on the border crisis. Oh, which one? The one where they're sending planes full of uh, migrants to other states? Meanwhile, uh, blocking any attempts by the Biden administration to uh, fund Border Patrol or anything like that so that they can make it look like more of a border crisis? Yeah, they're engineering a crisis. Also, yeah. very interesting that it's always Texas that is dealing with this crisis. And uh, None of the other California, states. Arizona, and New Mexico just doesn't seem to be nearly as much of a problem. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting how that works. Hey, look. If nothing else, it gave us that photo of Elon Musk looking terrible in a cowboy hat. God, yeah. Anyways, it's time now to move on to the headlines half of the show. But before we get to that, we got to let you know that this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. You can take your own food pics of food that you cooked yourself without having to go on the internet and find pics that someone else took. This food is going to look so beautiful. You're going to want to share it with everyone. You can feel proud that you actually cooked this food and not shame that you're lying to your followers. And we don't care what stove you cook it on. (laughs) Gas, wood, whatever. Whatever. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. 
Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients and everything arrives pre-portioned right to your doorstep for less hassle and less wasted food. Don't let recipe boredom strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. HelloFresh also owns Green Chef, another one of our sponsors, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. Uh, some of our favorite HelloFresh meals are the quick and easy bowls. Mm -hmm. And on next week's menu, oh baby, they got the taqueria chicken bowls with corn esquites, sour cream, hot sauce, and cilantro. Clocking in at just 20 minutes, so you don't even, you're not hungry for long, baby. You start Dang. cooking, and before you know it, you You got a picture ready to post. Yeah, make sure you take the picture before uh -huh. you eat. Go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeirdFree and use code WeeklyWeirdFree for free breakfast for life? Wow. Yes. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That is free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeirdFree with code WeeklyWeirdFree. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This episode is also sponsored by ZocDoc. You know when you get cornered by that aunt at a family gathering and you feel like you have to bend the truth? You know, the one who asks when you're getting married or what's going on with that promotion or why you still haven't moved out of mom and dad's basement or, you know, any other question that they might have, uh, only for her to not really listen and instead just judge you. Mm. Yeah, while you may have to grin and bear it with your family, you shouldn't feel that way when talking to your doctor about that rash that weirdly looks like your high school crush. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. And we're not talking about a few. We're talking about tens of thousands of doctors, all with verified patient reviews, so you can make sure the vibes are vibing before you ever meet IRL. With ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 72 hours. That's it. You can even score same-day appointments. After so many years of navigating this country's dysfunctional health insurance system, this is something that we it would have saved both of us so much time, so much stress and annoyance, but it's finally here. Just go to ZocDoc.com slash Weekly Weird and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That is Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash Weekly Weird. ZocDoc.com slash Weekly Weird. And now it's time for the headlines out of the show. And uh, we had uh, three weeks of headlines to mine through yeah. here. So, there's so these, are, these are the craziest, uh, wildest headlines from around the world from three weeks. There's some gold here. Yeah. And some of it goes back to the holiday season, like this first one here. Worse than giving birth, 700 fall sick after Airbus staff Christmas dinner. And this is, a, this is especially egregious. Airbus is a French company. Mm. This was at the HQ <laughs> in France. You expect... Now, it's the, because they had a pizza party. The, <laughs> uh, Chocolate, bro! Yeah, no, like, I, I don't know what they specifically ate, but... Um, Probably some escargot. They got, I don't know. Escargot, Do not touch the escargot! Escargot is delicious, actually. No, it is good, but you don't want it to be bad. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the, something went wrong. 700 people at this dinner got like acute gastritis. Yeah, terrible. Right before Christmas. Thanks, Airbus. If this is what they're doing for their meals, what are they doing with their planes that they're building? I don't trust that shit at all. I gotta say, it's a, it's a, it's a very terrible name for an airplane. Yeah, oh, but, well, see, that's the difference. It's a European company. They're like, you know, the bus, that clean, perfect Everyone thing. loves buses. Everyone loves riding the bus. They don't know that the American bus system is like basically, uh, it's where we shove just the dredges of society and mm -hmm. it, it barely fucking works and nobody uses it yeah. and it's poorly maintained. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get the funding it needs. Well, I'd say the vast majority of people have a very negative connotation with the word bus in this country. Yeah. They should have called it air car. Yeah. yeah. Air truck. Air yeah. truck. Air truck. Oh, oh yeah. Mm, I See, love the See, the truck. naming thing, it doesn't always work though because Boeing tried to do it with that 737 Max and we all see how that went. Yeah. Multiple crashes. Mm -hmm. And they're still having trouble. There was something like, uh, like yeah. two weeks ago, there was a problem with them. And like, uh, they're saw, like, ah, oh, the bolts come out. I saw one right before we came in today. I, I don't know what kind of plane it was, but uh, it took off and like within five minutes, like the emergency door just blew off. Yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems like everyone was fine. But like, again, I'm just like, I always have my fucking seatbelt on anytime I'm in the plane. Yeah. 
Uh, that that's the like all things considered, planes are incredible. We had two examples so far this year of planes being incredibly safe. That that window blows out, everyone's fine. That one that landed in Japan and hit another plane and burst into flames, everyone on the passenger plane survived. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Why? Well. Uh, but yeah, work on the name and work on that food. Yeah. I want to see a picture Sock of that food. What is going on? Cops crashed their car into Missouri Gay Bar and arrest its co-owner. Yeah, this was fucked this up. This happened right before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's Gay Bar in Missouri. They, a cop car crashed into it, and the owner had just been closing up shop and was, like, right there and was just like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah. And the cop is just like, oh. Anyway, You're under arrest. They started arguing, and, uh, yeah, I guess the owner, the cop said that the owner assaulted the cop, but uh, the owner says, no, I was just gesticulating with my hands, and the cop yeah, decided. I was uh, very in a very stre- stressful situation. Also, the cop, the pl- the cop and the police department have given like four different reasons for why this happened. Like the first was like, oh, I was trying to avoid a dog, and then of course, like the lawyers for the bar owners, they found security footage like from that street, and they're just like, no, you fucking weren't. You were just driving extremely fast, and they're yeah. like, oh, I was uh, trying to dodge. There was like a parked. Uh, th- th- there's like the more excuses you give, yeah, the like, less people are going to believe you. Like and. Uh, yeah, it seems like the most likely thing was that this cop was probably drunk, but there's no way to know that because uh, despite crashing his car into a fucking restaurant, uh, he was never breathalyzed. Yeah, because obviously. What? Oh, whoops, we must have forgot to do that. Yeah. Anyway, very cool. Very cool. We uh. love it in this country, don't we, folks? Speaking of gay, a second gay congressional staffer was filmed having sex in a Capitol building. Mr. President. <laughs> yeah, that uh, seemed to be a trend. I mean, George Santos started it. He showed, like, you can be gay, do crime. And so everyone, everyone's yeah. like, okay. I yeah, guess, that's I the guess first I video will, leaked. Uh, there was many more to come. Did uh, Republicans uh, go through this one as closely as the previous one? No. Watching frame by frame, overanalyzing it? This one actually happened before. I guess it happened over a year ago. And it was wow. kept pretty, like, hush, hush. Mm-hmm. Dealt with internally. But now uh, there's a deluge of... Someone uh, leaked it and... Uh, it was not the Daily Caller that reviewed the footage. It was the website Semaphore. Mm-hmm. And they, they did not comment on the specific sex act or whether there was uh, a condom used. They just mm-hmm. said it, it appeared to be two men. Well, get yeah. this over to uh, the Daily Wire. They'll, yeah. ta- they'll take a good, yeah. long, hard look at it. Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring yeah. can uh, sit down with some cigars and go frame by frame in this congressional gay porn. Really Look, I'm gonna, to know what happened. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to jerk off right at the beginning of this so that I don't accidentally get a hard on. So my it. mind is clear. Yeah. <laughs> so I can focus. And we, we should definitely do it together. Yeah. Uh, just so everyone in the room knows that we're not good. Yeah. Just so we're all on the same page also, in terms of calm. The headline from the Harvard president uh, statement from President Gay is the is one of the best Twitter uh, memes that's been going around. Yeah, I, I didn't follow that too close. So, uh, basically, it sounds like Harvard fired all their gays or something. I don't know. Whatever. It is the president. I don't care. Yeah, of the, it is very silly that America is, well, not America, America's press, who are all silver spoon yuppies that went to East Coast uh, mm-hmm. prestigious schools, are all just, everyone has to know what's fucking happening at Harvard all the time. Yeah. I could not give less of a shit. Like, it sounds like this lady got kind of screwed over, but also, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Anyone involved with Harvard, I'm like, you're probably a bad person. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Why am I supposed to care about Harvard? I don't know. And also, like, I think it was, I uh, can't remember which school it was, because this all started with, like, oh, people are waving Palestinian flags on a campus. Uh, we got to get all these university presidents into Congress to grill them about this. And there was, like, I think it was Columbia University where the president was just like, oh, I'm actually on vacation, so oh, well, not going to be there. Yeah. And just managed to avoid all of this. It's like, oh, you can say no. You don't have to show up. Yeah. Good to know for the future. There, it was like a whole back and forth thing. It was like the, that president of Harvard got called out for like plagiarizing something. And that was a strike against him. Uh, but then the, the person who a woman. also... Uh, the yeah. woman was gay. Uh, they, yes, and the the person who called out the president of Harvard had also been caught plagiarizing. I don't. It, it's I don't like, fucking yeah. care. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Harvard. Oh my god! <laughs> it's not even like it's a fucking national university. This is a private fucking college. Mm-hmm. I do not care. Yeah. Pastor accused of trying to push McDonald's cook's head into deep fryer for disrespecting his his wife. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Well, if we don't know because Jesus didn't have 
uh, deep fryers around. But yeah. I, well, I guess we're forced, wife, to, ass- yeah, but, we're I mean, forced to assume yeah. that this would be what happens. Jesus wouldn't have even had to shove the head into the deep fryer. He would have made the deep fryer levitate. Mm-hmm. And then, like... Who you think he, when who uh, force magic? the pastor was trying to shove the head down into the fryer, that he had one of those, uh, like, 90s beaded WWJD bracelets on? Yeah, probably. He's like, I'll show you what Jesus would do. Uh, he, I'm guessing he probably, he got caught up in the moment and it with muscle memory. He's so used to baptizing people. Yeah. Because, like, the way they do it... Uh, the Catholic Church, where I came from, they, when you're a baby, they just, like, the priest, like, lightly dunks the back of your head into a fucking birdbath. Yeah. And that's it. These fucking, these pastors uh, out in the South, they're just, like, fucking drowning you, trying to kill you. Well. And so you do that all day. The more violent, the, f- the more Holy Spirit you get. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The <laughs> more water enters your lungs, the higher your place in heaven. Yeah, that's holy water, baby. Breathe it in. You've seen the ones where they like drop the babies and stuff on accident, right? Those God. videos are wild. I, me personally, I wouldn't let a Catholic priest anywhere near my child. Well, I mean, it's it's all done very publicly, and uh, you know, the family's right there. Uh-huh. Everyone's watching. But then they drop them, or they bash them around. Well, you want to get a young, able-bodied priest. I guess so. With a good grip. <sighs> also, the baby bones, they're very soft. You can drop a baby. You see wow. the, 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 not to bring him up because we haven't talked about him in this episode, but the Musk thing about how people born in C-section are smarter because their heads aren't squeezed through a vagina? Yeah, that explains me. I'm yeah. a C-section. I am not. That's I, why Ian Miles Chong responded saying, they had to use, uh, <laughs> they had to use like tongs to pull me out because my head was so big. <laughs> They grabbed my head like a big block of foam and just <laughs> mangled it the, out. Got out the calipers. And that's why I look like this. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, here's exciting breaking news. Nude man nabbed by police after cannonball plunge into giant aquarium at Bass Pro Shop in Alabama. This isn't the pro shop that's the pyramid, right? No. Okay. This is, uh, but I mean, I guess even the satellite locations, they've got attractions. Oh, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I, I've actually, I looked it up because I've never been to one. I was like, where's the closest one? And it's like, it's not close. It's in like East might even be Riverside. Mm. And then beyond that, you got to go way up north. Like, we're mm. in a Bass Pro Shop desert kind of out here. Some people live we in We don't food have deserts. enough water to fill the giant aquarium. I mean... We don't yeah. have enough water for people to buy yeah. uh, personal fishing kayaks and stuff like that. But I want to go to one. They look like a lot of fun. And I, they got I think we should make the pilgrimage to the, the uh, pyramid at some point. That one's in, like, what, Tennessee? It's that on. one. So that one used to be like a sporting arena for a college, I think. I don't remember, but they bought it out and they converted mm-hmm. it. They made a great use of that pyramid. Yeah. And how many, uh, how many bodies are buried? Under yeah, that, that place looks wild. They got everything. Yeah. And I, I don't know if they have a, a fish tank, but this one had a full. Oh, a, it definitely has a fish an tank. aquarium big enough for someone to. He, I guess he was in there for like Dude, five pe- minutes. People have done this. Plenty of times before. There's videos of this going way back. They, these, these aquariums are huge. That's crazy. And they got fish in them and everything. Can you fish out of the aquarium? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so they're just there to make you think of get fish on the brain. Yeah, and you're so like, you, you spend more money on your fishing Picture how here. the lures work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could catch that bastard if they just let me. Well, some some people they decide to take matters into their own hands. Cannonball. Uh, this next one is actually, it's a tweet, not a headline, but the tweet explained it best. Dwayne The Rock Johnson keeps saying it's his first time having in and out but he's posted that same claim three times, along with this amazing photo attachment. Exclusive. Dwayne Johnson keeps saying it's his first time trying in and out but he's mistaken. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, I think we need to go a little bit easier on Mr. The Rock Johnson because he might be suffering from CTE. Yeah. Did he get this? He's back in wrestling. Did he yeah. get his shit rocked? He's, yeah, well, over the years, I'm sure. Well, I guess. So he he's done this like three times in the past. Wow. In and out. Years. How about that? Yeah. It's all because, you know, he most of the time he just eats like fucking barley and like <laughs> red meat. Like he's on the, the the hardcore bodybuilding diet is like that. That uh, more than anything else is just like I could never do that. I would go fucking insane if I was eating like just like chicken with nothing chicken with maybe like a tiny bit of salt yeah. and some like green beans every fucking night so but he has his cheat days like every certain amount of time 
and he he goes wild with it. And I guess he three times he's done his cheat day and in and out, but he just c- keeps forgetting he did it. I mean, look, some people would enjoy that. Uh, I mean, they, trying in and out for the first time it, over exactly, and over again. Yeah. Wow, that's what a hamburger is all about. <laughs> that's the the motto of in and out. For anyone that doesn't, li- well, they're expanding all over now. They yeah, in-N-Out. So they they opened that one recently. They're expanding too much. Yeah, they need I to think slow so. down. The the rule used to be if they couldn't make it on like one tank of gas yeah. with their semi trucks because they don't they never freeze anything. Yeah, everything's uh, shipped fresh and daily. Yeah. So, but there was one recently where it opened up. I can't remember what state it was in Idaho, Wyoming, or something, where there was an eight hour line. To get in and yeah, out. I saw that. Why like, don't you just come the next day? Yeah, I mean, look, I'll defend in and out. A lot, a lot delicious. of a lot of haters, but I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. I would never, ever, ever wait that long for it. I won't even wait like a half an hour for it. Look, the thing with In and Out is like people are like, oh well, I like Five Guys better, and it's like that's a completely different burger. Yeah, Five Guys is like if you're if you really need two thousand calories yeah, yeah, yeah. right now, like and a if, bag of fries. Yeah, if you are absolutely like famished and you want just an explosion of Fat, mm-hmm. salt, uh, calories. Yeah, uh, yeah the, that's the, the place to go. The In-N-Out burger. Also, is like, five, a Five Guys burger is like $15 now. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. In-N-Out, cheap, simple menu, secret menu if you need it, and the perfect size hamburger with fresh yeah. ingredients. It's a completely different meal than when people are like, the best hamburger. Yeah, you can have In-N-Out and not feel like shit for the rest of the day. I will say, uh, <laughs> we both have a mutual who, at every time I've gone to In-N-Out with him, orders two not a, not a quad stack, two separate double doubles. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, I mean, like because he's like yeah, the one's not enough, and I'm just sitting there like you monster. I think that's uh, that's a good way to. Did he get fries with it? Yes. Okay, well that might be pushing just, it, but just one fries. Well, and the fries they're a, they're an acquired taste because I didn't like them at first either, and then I was like, oh, I like them a lot. Yeah, I like that. They I, have a lot I of haters. Them. They're they're that's unique. because you're tasting freshness for the yeah, first time. These are real potatoes. <laughs> they're doing it right in this front of you. This is what fries tasted like before it's just like when americans go to europe for the first yeah. time and they're like oh Ew, where's this ketchup so weird yeah, yeah. <laughs> this ketchup tastes like tomatoes what is this <laughs> god we suck anyway next headline oh baby chinese chess champion stripped of title after defecating in hotel bathtub and wow. that's not all the it, I, so it's chinese it's not Chinese chess is its own thing. Yeah. It's not Go, it's something else. Anyway, but yeah, this guy... He's got marbles all over the This board. guy, he, he, he won and he threw a, a fucking victory bash in his hotel room and he, he fell asleep in the bathtub and shit himself. But also, he's been accused of sticking anal beads no. up his asshole. No, and he found and, them in the tub? And, and, no. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It was like, not only was he sitting there in his own filth, he had what appeared to be anal beads no, they we caught th- this man brown Aston. This is just again, like with the Magnus Carlson thing, it's just people on Chinese internet speculating. Yeah, like he's too good. I wonder if he has anal beads inside of his ass that vibrate to tell him what moves. And that's to why make. he shit the bathtub because he he took out the cheating device. There's <laughs> nothing else blocking it. It was not a cheating device. I just stick it in my ass to block the poop from coming out <laughs> and for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I like to feel good when I'm playing Chinese chess. <laughs> Uh, judge orders teen to write a book report as punishment for alleged mass shooting plan. Jesus fucking Christ. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines mass shooting as, mm-hmm. in this essay, I will explain. In conclusion, in case, uh, I'm really, really sorry. This is fucking wild. What's special? So he, this kid is like 13. He went on Discord and was talking about shooting up a fucking synagogue. And this was before October 7th. So this is like... He, I guess he he was already uh, super thinking about that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, someone else on Discord was like, sounds like this guy's going to murder a bunch of Jewish people. I'm going to call the cops. Quickly arrested. And uh, yeah, it's just like, well, I mean, he didn't really do anything. He just talked about it. So I don't know. Write a, write a report about, the judges made him write a book report about some like, uh, some Oscar Schindler type guy in World War II who like saved a bunch of Jewish people from the camps. But it's like, Okay, well, I hope I hope he gets the message. I mean, keep an eye on that one. Maybe keep an eye on that one. Yeah. George Santos says he wants to head ICE under Trump in 2025. The time is now. Santos, uh, I mean, this is it's cool that he he thinks he's still on the team. He like he did that Z-Way interview 
like right after we finished up for the year. And she kind of like put the nail in the George Santos saga mm. in a lot of ways, I think. Um, and he helped too, but it was just like, he, he's just like admitted that, you know, as long as people give him attention, he's yeah. going to stay at it. And he has been posting behind a paywall on Twitter for the last month. And, they, you, all, you know, you can see the first line. It always sounds like, oh, he's about to drop some juicy shit. And not once has anything he's posted behind his paywall made it like into the greater news discourse. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, there's got to be reporters or just like normal people who paid the $5 or whatever, but uh, he, is, he is not spilling any tea, it would appear. Also proof that uh, his uh, light is fading. He has reduced the price of his cameos by $150. Yeah. Um, He's having a fire sale. Well, too late, George. Mm-hmm. Fool me once. We tried to strike while the iron was hot, and you rejected mm-hmm. our cameo offer. And now offer. everyone is rejecting you. Yeah. Nobody you, wants And it. now it's like... This is old news. Why would yeah. we want a George Santos cameo in 2024? George Santos. 2023 was the time. Left in 2023. Shia LaBeouf moles plan to become deacon after Catholic confirmation. He just wants to drown babies. Bonk, 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 bonk. This is, he is such a weird guy and seemingly a not a good, uh, good person at all based on you remember various he- allegations against him. The weirdest one for me is he made an entire fucking movie about how abusive his dad is. Mm-hmm. And then admitted, like, on the press tour, he's like, oh, no, my dad was actually really cool. I just made all this shit up. Remember when he <laughs> sat in a room with a bag on his head and just stared at people yeah, for hours and hours? Yeah, his performance art phase. Yeah. Where even that, he was, like, stealing performance art stuff from other performance artists. Yeah. He, like, stole a graphic novel. Well, so, he, right? for, yeah, first he, he plagiarized a Daniel Klaus graphic novel for a short film he made, like, without credit or permission or anything. He got caught... And then he did his performance art thing where he just basically stole like a bunch of Marina Abramovich uh, performances, but did them himself. Um, yeah, but I guess now he's going to be a deacon, which is like, I believe it's deacon. I think I'm not sure if that's the one where you can still like get married. It's like you're kind of a priest, but you're not. Mm-hmm. Anyway, very exciting. Uh, welcome to Catholicism, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, just another Don't drown any babies. Of, of just the the horrors that play out against child actors. I mean, yes. Have probably. you seen all the Amanda Bynes shit uh, popping up again? She oh, she's back and not doing well, yeah. which is very sad. Well, I mean, it's she very has, sad. she has like full on schizophrenia. Yeah, like that one's that's like that is a perfect storm of shit where. Uh, you have the fucked up childhood in show business. And you also and have a, also yeah. when you like turn like 22, your brain just like stops working correctly. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah, that's fucking sad. <sighs> um, I, I'm gonna, I think with Shia LaBeouf, yeah, there's probably his, his upbringing probably at fault, but also he just kind of seems like a lot of that is on Yeah, because he's, well. he, as an adult, he seemed kind of well adjusted for a while. He did the Transformers movies, the Indiana Jones, yeah. and then everything. It I was like the accusations of plagiarism, like that was just. I think he's just kind of a sociopath. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, reply to a comment. We got to start uh, getting things wrong more. There was so much engagement in the last yeah. video about your tarot card. Uh, you claiming it was death when it was actually what, what were people saying? It, it was, was the 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 one of the Knight of Cups, the Five of Cups. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. My wife's really into this shit. I don't understand it. Well, you're in the doghouse tonight, buddy. Oh well. Yeah. Give me my reading. Uh, but yes, uh, leave comments, like the video, and if you somehow missed that video or the other ones we did this week, they're over here on the side. Check those out. Like the video, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.